Hello everybody, Hellcrex here, and welcome to another Mercenary Thoughts from the Underseer, and I think it's, what, 268? Okay, today we're going to jump forward into 3060 era with the Garm. I had a special request from somebody that said they wanted to have a take a look at it. It's a little interesting mech that reminds me of the Valkyrie. It's 35 tons, it's a 585, has 10 single heat sinks, and at 3060, you would think that double heat sinks would be the standard, you'd think. All right, it has three and a half tons of armor, it has 62 points, which is just enough to keep the pilot from falling out. And then it has a prefla of little weapon systems and of capabilities here. It has an LBX-5 auto cannon in the right torso with a ton of ammunition. It has an LRM-10 in the left torso with a ton of ammunition. And then it has five jump jets in the legs and center torso. All right, so what do I think? Well, like I said, it reminds me a lot of the Valkyrie. It's an old design that's been sort of... It's like, take the Valkyrie and bump it up a little bit in, in uh, tonnage and keep the weapon systems similar. That's kind of like how I feel about it. Uh, it's a... Being in it, it's a 5.8, 5, it's kind of slow for this era. You, when you start seeing uh, lots of different uh, XL extended range ER weapons, you got clan weapons prevalent throughout the inner sphere now, uh, being sold by the clans to the inner sphere just because they need the money. And then you still have the raids by the clans. And this is a second line mech. It's not, well, when you look at the battle value coming out at 700, yeah, it sort of fills a slot, possibly, but there's some other lighter mechs that I think that can do the job better. Uh, like I said, this is a second line mech, pure and simple. Uh, this is going to be, it, I don't think it will have a problem going out to the periphery, uh, doing pirate, anti piracy uh, role duties. It's like, all right, let's. Send them over here to take care of these guys in the back backfield type thing where you're not going to be seeing high-tech weapons yet. All right, so you're going to be seeing the old uh, Succession War style weapon systems, and this thing will be fine in that role. But when you start looking at how it's going to be facing off against uh, more advanced weapon systems, no, it, it's outclassed, pure and simple. Now, the LBX-5 being that, you know, you, you're only going to use cluster munitions in it. You're not going to use solid shot. So it's always going to be cluster because you got one ton. You're one choice. And you got an LBX, I'm using cluster munitions. Now, that means it's going to be a crit hunter. It's uh, an order of operations of a who fires first. This is going to be one of those mechs that fires last because it's going to be hopefully finding open spots in someone's armor. And then with the... Uh, LRM um, 10 on board. Yeah, it's it does have it's a mech that has range. It's got some uh, capability of hitting out at good distance. So that's pretty much where you want to park it for most part. If you can find yourself in some heavy woods or something of that nature, yeah, just like then you could just use it as a fire support mech, a light one. That, that has jump jets, it will feel right at home with uh, your, let's say, trebuchets and stuff like that. But on the front line where it could face off against some heavies and assaults, this thing's life expectancy might be a turn, if it's lucky. <laughs> it was just like, hey, we got weapons in range, fire, oh, we're dead, type of thing. So you need to keep it farther back and... Uh, like I said last, I think it was last week, we had the pike where it's one of those things where it does damage, but it's it's insignificant amount that it's not going to attract attention. That's where it kind of falls into the grand scheme of things. You move this thing forward and you look over there and go, huh, 
That's a lightly armored light mech, not moving very fast because the best it can have is three pip mod. And if you got a mech that's got good gunnery and like pulse weapons and stuff like that, and look over there and go, oh, that looks like an easy kill. Just this, bam, done. And that's probably what's going to happen. It's my experience when it, you know, you're talking light mechs like this with hardly any armor. Now, there are a few variants of this mech that are running around. All right, they got the Garm A1 A2. Uh, this one comes out in the Jihad era. Uh, it has a light fusion engine. Okay, I can get behind that. It's a light mech. I don't have a problem putting light XLs and light fusion engines in a light mech because most of the time you get into the torso, of this mech is dead. So you might as well increase its speed. Uh, it has an increase in armor protection with light ferrofibrous armor. And it has a slight pip up in movement. And it carries around an XL gyro. The LBX uh, autocannon has been replaced with plasma rifles. All right. And two tons of ammunition. Okay. I can get behind that. I The damage output is going up. What's not to like about that? And then the heat sink's been upgraded to double strength. So 10 double heat sinks. Okay, that's a logical uh, transition. Up to double. So you got a mech that's pumping out heat because of plasma rifles. And you got an LRM 10. And you got jump jets. Just 10 single. Don't cut it. Going into 10 doubles, yes. Uh, at least then you can fire and jump if necessary and extract yourself without barbecuing the pilot. There you go. So this is a build I can get fully behind. Yep. And it comes out, but it comes out almost 1,100 battle value. So you have an increase in battle value versus the 700. You're looking at almost a 400 increase. It Then it starts looking at, oh, is that worth taking or not? But if you are a um, Capellan player and you like this mech, go for it. I can see this being a very useful style mech. Kind of like a light cavalry mech. It's not a scout mech, it's a cavalry mech. Alright, then we got the O1B. Alright. This one was built to operate independent supply lines, increases long-range indirect fire capability. It removes the LBX-5, replaces with an ER large laser. Okay, I'm behind that. The mech adds a Artemis fire control to the LRM-10 and adds two more heat sinks. So now it's running around with 12 single heat sinks and a large laser. Good. And you do have Artemis on the LRM-10. I have no problem with those. The ER large and Artemis, okay, works good for me. And it comes in at just a uh, little over 200 more battle value. But you have the capability of adding two more tons to this mech armor by just giving it double heat sinks. I would rather have the increase. It's like it's just logical. You take the those two tons. You don't need them because you can just give yourself doubles. And then next thing you know, it's like you get two extra tons. You throw it on the armor. Your life expectancy might go to two turns, maybe three, just by adding that little bit. If you can stay out of distance and the. Uh, range increase is just slightly. You know, it's like you're doing a little bit more damage, like four more versus the the LBX. Hey, I, I can get behind that. And then we have the 01C version. This is during the FedCom Civil War. The LBX can be replaced by a rotary rack five. Two tons of, of case protected ammunition. All right. For, yes, you definitely need two tons because a rack five will burn through our ammo really quick. And the left torso had mounts an ER medium laser is the mech's only fallback weapon. So you got rid of your LRM-10 for a Rack 5 and an ER medium laser for your backup. And you're looking at almost four, well, 450 more points for battle value. 
to me, uh, even heck, personally, I'd rather had give me double heat sinks in ERPPC instead of the rotary rack five. Ah, it's like, and you're still, yeah, it, uh, it's it's one of those things where you just look at it and it's like, oh, no, 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 no. It, that, it doesn't work for me. It's like, I understand the whole, it's like you run in there and just hit it with burst fire with a rack five and hope that you, you don't jam and you do a bunch of damage and then you try to extract yourself while you're trying to unjam your weapon because most likely you have jammed it. Uh, so you're taking a turn away or two. Yeah, uh, I hmm. personally, like I said, I'd rather have an ERPPC because all that tonnage you have wrapped up in that rack can, you know, yeah, you're doing more damage with the rack, but the odds of it jamming are hardly, highly increased. And I usually use my racks more conservatively down in the, the three shot, four shot range. So I'm not jamming or the slight chance of jamming. You know, I go that route. Because if I have handed a mech that has a rack on it, like uh, I'd rather just keep the damage going out. But then they're not a light mech. Which it brings up an interesting question, if you've been this far. I look at the, the, the picture of the uh, um, Garm, and I see that. It looks like it's carrying around a AC-20 on its shoulder. And it looks almost like a uh, changed up hunchback with the AC-20. You know, like it's ready to throw out Buicks downrange. Yeah, it's like this is one of those mech designs. As you look at the uh, actual Iron Wind version, it's like yeah, they should have made it a smaller uh, cannon on looking cannon on that shoulder. But hey, hey, what can you say? Well, overall, I can see the there's possibility of vers versatility with this mech. Uh, there, there's potential. Especially with the one with the plasma rifles. That, that one's like talking to me and saying, oh, I can get behind that one. It's, it's got enough goodies on it to make it look good to me and useful. So overall, if I was handed to this, I, I know pretty much how I'm going to use it. It's like, you give me the standard version, it's going to hang back. You give me the one Capellan version with the plasma rifles, it's going to move forward a little bit more and keep moving and let somebody else take the hits while you're sitting there whittling away at the corners. And then you give me some of the other ones. It's like like the rack version. To me, that's like dive in there, unleash hell, and then like run away as like as you're banging on your 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 weapon system trying to unjam it. Because most like my luck is always jam. It's, it's just a given. All right, Murphy it runs around in my cockpit. I just put it that way. All right, so hope you guys like it. Like and subscribe, share with your friends, and we'll see you in the next one. Hellcracks out.